at the end of the season looming, it's time for some hard yards and hard goodbyes. Brittany was all right. Archie was really, once again, full on himself. I'm just a bit annoyed at him for not focusing on the jumps. He's always going to be doing something. When we first got Archie, he was he lost quite a lot of weight and he was quite like, lethargic from his travel and stuff. So this whole season, we've just been, what is he doing? He so knows that we're talking about him. He's trying to get our attention by doing silly things. Mum's feeding him oats every night, and I guess it's, like, good. I want all my horses to be real energetic and, like, happy with themselves, but when he's not performing as good and not concentrating as good, it's really frustrating. Oh, Archie. <laughs> and you're always neighing out to all the girls, and it's just so hard. <laughs> Everything he does at the moment is just so over the top. Archie, stop it. Archie. If he doesn't want to do anything, he just puts his head up. Because he knows that we can't reach up there. <laughs> See? Hey, see? It's not that bad. I always thought of him as, like, this old grandpa horse. And then now, he's completely different, and he's like this teenager. I think everything Archie does is for attention. Oh, my God. I think I'm just going to have to give him a bit more work. So today, I'm just getting him out onto the farm and doing some hill work with him. I'm just setting my timer, because everything's run by time. Normally, when I do hill work with them, I do three to four minutes trotting warm-up on each rein, and then I canter them four minutes to five minutes one way and then change the way. From going to the gym all the time, interval training is really good, so I'm like, they should do it then. <laughs> Jeez, he still wants to keep going. It's just, ugh. A lot of horses get tired towards the end of the season, and I think Archie's just getting into the groove of everything and getting real full of himself. So it's positive, but it, I hope it just doesn't cost us anything. I'm hoping that we'll peak at the right time. I have a feeling that we will, but I'll be very disappointed if we don't. <laughs> Done. I think he enjoyed letting off some steam. Hopefully he'll be more relaxed. Hey. Eh? When it's time for them to work, they need to work and that would not be Archie again. He's so naughty. He's like becoming human. That's why you shouldn't be too best friends with your horses. This is mainly the pony's paddock, Bill's paddock, and he was gelded as a five-year-old when he came in from the wild. So I'm assuming that is why he poses in a pile like a stallion. <laughs> and it makes things so easy because it's all just in one area for me to pick up. So I had like a good family friend who she taught at the pony club on Waiheke Island. We went to watch her one day, we, Mum took me down and I was so jealous and I said to Mum, I was like, Mum, I need to get a job, I want to get a pony. I think I was about nine. And so Mum was great and she organised me a paper run and I had, I had the paper run for five years, saved up for a pony. We ended up buying a very green horse because we didn't know anything. She was like a five-year-old 16-hand horse named Bailey. I worked for three years to actually buy her and then two more years to like keep paying for her. No, you gotta do what you gotta do, and I really wanted a pony, so <laughs> yeah. And then we got Bill, was my second second pony. He'd been out of the wild for about a year. I went up to a pony camp, and I got to have a ride on him, and I don't know, you can't not fall in love with him. 
I begged Mum. She was pretty horrified when I said I wanted the little wild pony. <laughs> and then I guess it kind of took off from there in the jumping side of things. <laughs> He's just at you everywhere, always. Bill is a pony, so this is my last season with him. I think a lot of people try to get off ponies quite quickly, but I would never sell them if I, if I didn't have to. I think it's going to take me quite a while to get over it, because he's literally like my best friend. I'm probably going to cry. <laughs> it's like a weekly occurrence. <laughs> it's obviously better for him to go somewhere where he can keep jumping and keep doing what he loves. Hopefully no one cuts his hair. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's his thing. He's come this far with a hair like that. Like, he'd look so flash if we cut it, but it's just his signature look. That's what makes him Bill. He's so handsome. He really comes shy. <laughs> he does this every single time. You can't, like, just biff it on him. He gets such a fright. Bill's been jumping in the Pony Grand Prix series. He's been really good. He's won seven Grand Prix this season. So, yeah, that's obviously put him at the lead at the moment, but it's pretty close. If something happened and he didn't win it, I'd still be so proud of him. Like, he's come so far from the little wild pony that I bought <laughs> four years ago. Are you hungry? Oh. I think when the day comes, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a lot of tears, <laughs> yeah. So today I have a lesson with David Nichols. He is Lime's old owner, Stephen's brother. So it's a little bit of an inside. Um, he knows a little bit more about Lime and it's really good help. David's the commentator. He does horse of the year most years and some other big events. Faster than 49 points. So he likes the sound of his own voice, I think. <laughs> Don't let him be lazy. Get to work. Thank you. More leg. And then slow him down. Shorten him up. So we're working on a little bit of muscle building with him, kind of getting him to shorten up and have the power without kind of just loping along. Please your stirrups and go sitting. Leg. More leg. A little bit more. David is quite bossy. It's kind of just getting me to be the boss of Lime, I think because I'm a little bit too nice to him sometimes. Shorten. Leg. More. More. Yeah. It is a change of mindset for me. I feel a little mean, because I do love him, and I want him to just uh, do whatever he wants, but I do have to start making him work and listen to me. There, there. Soften that inside. Job done. He's definitely trying a little harder now. Pop him down the treble. Oh. When you land, try not to grab him, OK? Because he's just going to want to run, all right? Do the same thing again. The treble's mainly to get him to kind of use his power and his scope a little bit more to get in and back himself off. I can only do so much in the little one stride I have. So, yeah, it's kind of up to him to kind of get out of the way of the jump. Good. Keep this. Keep this. Boy line. Sit down and finish it off. Good, thank you. Good. Rails don't worry me. The flat work worries me more. If you can't get to the fence, you can't jump it. And flat work's the only way to get to the fence. Sucks, eh? <laughs> it's too hot for this. <laughs> oh, it's far too warm. It's starting to pay off. It's definitely a huge difference in line, and my seat's getting a little bit better in my flat look, so it's it's kind of nice to start to see a change. Hey, thanks, New Zealand on air. <laughs>